Jai Haradha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Premanande Haribo Omakyana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur and Militanya Nathasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandiham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Koranke Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishnavi bio namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hatvaita Kadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
So today we are celebrating the Snanyatra, which is the bathing ceremony for Lord Jagannath. And it's also the disappearance day of two very important, very prominent disciple followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Makunda Datta and Sridhar Pandit. So we'll speak first about the Jagannath Ratyatra something and then we'll go on to speak about Makunda. So, uh, this bathing festival of Lord Jagannath is, uh, is actually the birthday of Lord Jagannath. This is the appearance, the day in which the Jagannath, Lord Jagannath appeared in this form. So it's celebrated in this way by having the auspicious bathing of the deities. And then after the bathing of the deities, then it is said that the deities are a little sick because they've been bathed. This weather, this time of the year, very hot and humid and sometimes very cold when it rains. Temperature changes a lot. It's so easy to get sick. And so Lord Jagannath, Lord Balaram and Subhadra Maharani, the three of them were all not so well after the bathing ceremony and they retire to some private place and there's no darshan for 14 days. So, Lord, Jag, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was residing in Jagannath Puri, he was accustomed to go and see Lord Jagannath every day. Every morning, he would go there to see Lord Jagannath. And so when the Snanyatra takes place, then there's no more darshan. So, the altar is empty. So it is said, at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would go to Alanath, which is about 30 kilometers or more away from Jagannath Puri. And in Alanath, there's a special deity there. It's actually a Vishnu deity. We're not allowed in. Orissa is very conservative and they don't allow non-Hindus by birth anyway. Not Hindu people who are not Hindu by birth are not allowed into the temple. Anyway, it's a very important temple and actually when they were renovating it, at that time Gorgovinda Maharaj was uh, giving he was, no, was it Gorgo or Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati? Was it? They were rolling the beadies so that they could finish it, get it finished quicker. Wanted to finish quicker. And so uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come there to Alanath. He would stay there for the whole 14 days where there was no darshan of Lord Jagannath, he would come and take darshan of Alanath, which is a Vishnu form. Now Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is preaching Krishna Bhakti. So why is he so attracted to come there to see this form of Lord Vishnu? But it's found out that this deity of Lord Vishnu is worshipped by Vishnu mantra, uh, rather Krishna mantra. It's a Vishnu deity which is worshipped by Krishna mantras. So it's explained that there's a pastime of Lord Krishna hiding from the gopis in Vrindavan. Krishna likes to play these tricks with the gopis. So the gopis are looking everywhere 
where is Krishna, where is he gone, where is that boy, where is our sweetheart? So Krishna disguised himself, he transformed himself into Lord Vishnu. So the gopis came running and they saw who th they thought it was Lord Vishnu. So they all bowed down and paid their obeisances. But then they inquired from Lord Vishnu, did you see where Krishna went? Did you see which way Krishna had gone? So Krishna is playing the part of Vishnu and he said, oh yeah, he went over there, he's that way, just go that way. And so the gopis went running, tried to catch Krishna. But when Srimati Radharani came, then Lord Vishnu was no longer able to maintain his forearm form and he revealed his actual form as Lord Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come to that temple and on the floor of that temple you can see impressions where the stone actually melted due to the ecstasy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would feel great ecstasy coming to see that form of Lord Vishnu because he understood this is actually Krishna, it's not Vishnu. So even today you can see there uh, the impressions on the stone. And just nearby, just a, one minute away practically from that temple of Alanath, is the Godiamat temple. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he constructed temple there also in Alana. Because it's a, an important place connected with the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would stay there for 14 days and after 14 days he would come back and he would have the Gundicha Marjanam and get ready for Rathiatra and for the reappearance of Lord Jagannath. So today is uh, just the bathing of the deities and then no longer seen. So we were saying today is also the disappearance day of two illustrious Vaishnavas, one of whom is Mukunda Datta. And Mukunda Datta is very prominent in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, particularly those pastimes in Mayapur, because Mukunda Datta was a class friend of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That they were in the same class, so they grew they grew up together, and. Mukunda was a very nice devotee and we know in the early pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he was uh, portraying the, the pastimes of scholarship and he was known as Nimai Pandit. So he would take pleasure in arguing with Mukunda Datta and they would fight with each other. They'd have arguments based on logic. And Nimai would really relish these battles, debating with Makunda and defeating him. And it became so bad that Makunda would, would not want to see if he saw Nimai Pandit coming, he'd, he'd go and he'd run away or he'd hide. He d didn't want to confront him because he knew, oh, he's going to debate with me again. Oh, no, I don't want to get in another argument with him and I can never defeat him and he, whatever I say, he will twist it and, oh, no. He would just try to stay as much as he could away from Nimai Pandit. So Chaitanya Bhagwat describes that at one point when Nimai Pandit saw Makunda running away from him, he told, his, he told his servant, he said, uh, he's running away from me. He said, just wait 
till I assume my pastimes of devotion. I will show him such intense devotion, he will never want to leave me. So, Makunda Datta, he uh, was able to see these pastimes of devotion after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Gaya and taken his initiation from Ishwara Puri. Then, if, when he came back to Mayapur, it was Makunda Datta who was singing beautiful songs of Krishna's pastimes, so, giving solace to the mind of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because, of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Kanai Natsala, and there also he had had a very heavy, very uh, real experience in uh, feeling separation from Krishna, seeing Krishna and then being separate from him. So he came back to Mayapur and he was in that mood of separation from Krishna and it was Makunda Datta who was giving solace to him by singing beautiful songs about Krishna's pastimes. Makunda Datta was uh, It said that previously he was a singer in Vrindavan. There were two brothers, Makunda Datta and Vasudev Datta. And they were both singers in Braja. One was Madhukanta and one was Madhuvrat. So they came in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And Makunda particularly was regularly singing beautiful songs and ap appropriate verses from the Bhagavatam to suit the minds of different devotees. It was Makunda who brought Gadarhar to meet Pundarik Vijanidi. When Pundarik Vijanidi came first to Navadweep, nobody really knew him. Lord Chaitanya knew, of course, but other people didn't know. So Makunda told Gadarhar, a great Vaishnava has come, you have to come and see him. And Gadarhar was the renounced Brahmachari. So he came to see Pundarik Vijanidi. Pundarik Vijanidi had quite a big estate. He owned a lot of property. So he was a wealthy man. And he came with his servants, and Gadarhar came to see how this uh, Pundari Vijanidi is. And Gadarhar was shocked. He thought, this person, he can be a great devotee. He looks like a materialist. Because he was dressed in the best cloth and his hair was nicely decorated and set. And then he had so many nice things in front of him, different sherbets and numpkins and different sweets. Then people were also fanning him. And then he, he just looked like he, he didn't look very renounced at all. And Gadarhar, because he's a brahmachari, and so he sees this person, he thinks, what, what, what kind of devotee is this? But then Makunda could understand his mind and Makunda began to sing from the Bhagavatam. Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam jagam sayapayanad apyasadvi. Like that. He was singing that very nice verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam that who could be more fortunate than this baki? <laughs> Bhakti means uh, the sister of Bakasura. There are three in the family, right? Agasura also is from that family. Nice family, eh? <laughs> Baka, Aga, and Putana. <laughs> My goodness. Ooh. So, anyway, he sang that verse. Who could be more fortunate than 
Putana, because although she came with the intention of poisoning Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna gave her the greatest mercy. Who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna? That's the point. Who could be more merciful than Krishna that he gave mercy to this Putana who came with poison on her breast with the intention of killing Krishna? But Krishna accepts her as his mother. So hearing that verse awakened such intense bhava in the mind of Pundarik Vijanidi that he became ecstatic, he fell off his seat, he rolled on the ground, the floor became flooded in tears, and, and he, did, he remained in that condition for a, a considerable time. And so when Gadarhar saw the display of ecstatic love, then Gadarhar understood, whoa, oh, he is really a great devotee. And Gadarha considered, I must have committed offense to him. And Gadarha decided, he took the permission from Lord Chaitanya, he took initiation from Pundarik Vijanidi. So it was due to the help of Makunda. Makunda brought him there, convinced him to come there to meet this, to see this Pundarik Vijaniri, and it was Makunda who sang that verse which awakened the Baba in Pundarik Vijaniri. So Makunda was really playing an important role there. And uh, we see also that it was another important pastime in relation to Makunda was when, when they did drama. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was playing the part of the goddess of fortune and it was Makunda who was singing songs for the drama. Makunda was performing, he was singing all the different songs. When Lord Chaitanya performed his pastime of the uh, 21 hours of ecstasy on the altar of Lord Vishnu, he was giving benedictions to everyone. Even people, other devotees didn't know, like Sridhar. They didn't know. They'd never heard of Sridhar. They had, Lord Chaitanya had to tell them where to go and find him. And Lord Chaitanya was giving benedictions to everyone, telling them different things, different things which had happened. He was revealing to them his divine nature and he was giving them blessings but he never called Makunda and all the devotees were surprised that you know Makunda is very dear to you he's your very dear friend he's been with you for so long and you always take so much pleasure in his singing why don't you call Makunda and give him blessings but when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard Makunda's name, he said, I don't want to hear that person. I don't want to hear about that person. I don't want anything more to do with that person. He is Kanda Jatiya. Kanda Jatiya. Kanda means straw and Jati, jati means a stick. So sometimes he's like a straw in the mouth and sometimes he's got a stick and he's beating me. The devotees were all surprised. They said, what? Makunda? Makunda, he's, he, he's your dear, you know, your very dear devotee and he's a wonderful devotee. And you associate with him, you, you know, he's been with you for so long. What is wrong? What offense has he done? Why is it you're talking like this? We, we're so surprised to hear all of this from you. So then Lord Chaitanya explained to them, he said, this Makunda, he, he, sometimes he will sit with me and we will talk about devotion 
and he will say, yes, bhakti is the supreme, bhakti is the ultimate, it's the goal, prema punarto mahan, we should develop love for God, it's only by devotion. And he will say, be humble, lower than the straw in the street, like this, offer all respects to others. At that time, he's got a straw in his mouth. He's taking the straw in his teeth. But at other times, he goes other places, he goes to other sampradayas, and he goes to meet with other people who are preaching not bhakti, but they're preaching like things like from the Yoga Vashishta. And they're talking about the path of monism. And he's talking, yes. The goal is to become one, to get liberation, to enter in the Brahman. Sarvam kauvidam Brahma. Everything is Brahman. We have to become one with the Brahman. And it doesn't matter if it's bhakti or jnana or yoga or karma. If we get to the Brahman, that's the goal. All these other paths are all the same. So he said, when he's talking like this, then it's a problem. Then he's beating me with a stick. What am I supposed to do? Sometimes we, we know Advaita. Advaita sometimes he's preaching this yoga vashishta. And Makunda also goes there and he sits with them. And he will agree, yes, yes. Very nice, very true. This is, this is a problem. And so he's beating me with a stick. He's supposed to be devotee. Why is he going with all these other non-devotees? Why is he going to hear from all these people who are not talking about devotion? This is why he's beating me with a stick. What kind of person is this? Therefore, I don't want to see him anymore. Don't mention his name. Don't bring him to me. So Makunda had been sitting outside behind a curtain there and he could hear everything. And he was shedding tears. And he was thinking, today my life is useless. I am going to give up my life. There's no more purpose to my life. I will just give up my life. I'm going to end my life. But he turned to the devotees. He said, just before I end my life, you just ask Mahaprabhu, in the future, will there ever be a time when I can again have the opportunity to associate with him. So they came and they asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that will, in the future will Makunda ever be allowed to have your darshan? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, he will get my darshan after 10 million lifetimes. So when Makunda heard, Oh, after 10 million lifetimes, I will get the opportunity to again have the darshan of the Lord. And he became ecstatic and he began to dance. Again, again I will be able to see him. Again I will be able to get his darshan. He became so joyful. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard how Makunda was waiting so patiently and so enthusiastically so that in the future he could again get the darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then he said, bring him here now. So. Makunda was still ecstatic, thinking, again I will get his darshan, again I will get... The devotees had to lead him. He didn't know what he was doing, he didn't know where he was going. 
the devotees had to just take him and bring him in front of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then he came in front of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He fell on the floor offering his obeisances. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu talked to him and told him, he said, Mahaprabhu said, today you have conquered me. Usually Chaitanya would conquer Makunda when they would debate logic. But today Lord Chaitanya said, you have conquered me by your pure loving devotion. Right? Krishna can never be conquered, but he is conquered by pure devotion. Jane praya sam mudapasya namanta eva jivanti san mukaritam bhavadiya bhartam stane stita shruti gatantan van manobir ye praya so jita jitopi asita istri lokyam. Krishna is called Ajita, never conquered, but he is conquered by the pure love of his devotees. So because Makunda was waiting so patiently to get the darshan of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu allowed him to come immediately and he told Makunda, he said, you know, for your offenses, going everywhere and associating with all these other people, I was not going to see you for 10 million births. But now we've, we've nullified all that and the 10 million births has become just simply one moment. And after one moment you've been brought, now again you can see me. So, I'm forgiving you for all your offenses. And this way Lord Chaitanya explained to Makunda that I'm nullifying all your offenses. You were going there everywhere. Now again you can have my darshan. But behave properly. Don't go everywhere. Show the right behavior to everyone. And then after hearing the words of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Makunda began to offer prayers to the Lord. And he described how one can only see the Lord by devotion. He said, Duryodhan, he could never actually understand, he could never see the real form of the Lord. Duryodhan was so foolish that when Lord Krishna came there to the palace to see Maharaj Dasarath and to plead with him, because Lord Krishna had come there at the request of Maharaj Yudhisthira, that Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to make some final attempt to avoid the battle of Kurukshetra. So he'd asked Lord Krishna to go there and deliver the message. And of course, Maharaj Dasarath listened to Duryodhan, and Duryodhan said, nothing doing, no way, we're not going to compromise, we're has there has to be war. And then when Krishna was leaving, Duryodhan was so full, he tried to arrest Krishna. He thought, let me take Krishna as a prisoner and capture him. He's come alone. Nobody's with him. Duryodhana was thinking Krishna was alone. But when Duryodhana tried to arrest Krishna, Krishna just laughed at him. And then Krishna revealed from his body, he said, you think I'm alone? Look! And so many great demigods all came out from the body of Krishna. So many powerful beings, they all came out from Krishna's body. Krishna was showing one kind of universal form from his body. And Krishna just laughed at Duryodhana. You're so stupid. So Makunda was describing this. He said that Duryodhana, he had no qualification. He could not see Krishna. 
he could see the universal form, the material form of Krishna, but he couldn't see the, the pure spiritual form of Krishna. And then similarly also, at the time of the marriage of Rukmini, so many kings had come there to see Sishupala, who was supposed to marry Rukmini. But Rukmini, she wanted to marry Krishna. And her father also, Bhishmaka, he was on, in favor. He was in, uh, in, in favor of his daughter marrying Krishna. So Rukmini wrote a letter to Krishna and asked Krishna to come and take her as his wife. And then just at the time of the marriage, they were bringing Rukmini to the temple, Am Amba Ambika temple, Ambika Durga temple, Ambika. And the custom was she would go to see the deity of Ambika, then the marriage would begin. So just at that time, Krishna came and he kidnapped Rukmini and took her away. And all the kings, they're all chasing after Krishna. But they cannot understand who is this Krishna. They're thinking he's just another king. They cannot see his real form because they are not devotees. Without devotion, he cannot see the Lord. But Kubja, although she was a hunchback woman and although she was in the service of Kamsa, she could see Krishna's form. She could understand Krishna as the Supreme Lord. Similarly, the Yagnapatnis, they could understand Krishna, they could see Krishna's form. When the cowherd boys came to beg, they went to the, the, husband, the Brahmins, the, Yagna, the Yagnic Brahmins, and they wouldn't even speak to the cowherd boys. But the wives of the Brahmins, the Yagnapatnis, they, they came running. When they heard Krishna is nearby, they came running to bring offerings for them. And then uh, the florists, similarly, the florists, Sudama and Mathura, when Krishna and Balaram came there, to see Krishna, the, the florist immediately offered beautiful flower garlands to decorate Krishna and Balaram because they were devotees. They could understand, they could see Krishna. But Kamsa's laundry man, he could not see Krishna. He could not understand Krishna's identity. They could not actually see because they had no devotion. So in this way, Makunda was lamenting his own foolishness. He said, because I have, I have no devotion, so I was so foolish to go to these other places and to hear from them about the path of impersonalism and oneness with the Brahman, because I have no devotion. So. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then blessed Makunda. He said, actually, he said, I'm only joking with you. He said, I'm only playing this, doing this uh, punishment with you as a joke. He said, I know your heart. I know that you are actually really the devotee. And I bless you that you will always come and sing for the Lord in all of his different form, different pastimes. You'll be able to be there to sing for him, to give pleasure. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I eternally reside on the tongue of Makunda. Because Makunda was singing so beautifully the glories of the Lord. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I reside on Makunda's tongue. Devotee wants to use all the senses in the service of Krishna. So Makunda's service was singing beautiful songs about Krishna's names and pastimes. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
like to hear these songs of Makunda. Another pastime which took place was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sannyas. Before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, he went to the home of Makunda Datta and told him, I'm planning to take sannyas. But Makunda Datta begged him, Oh no, please, please, my Lord, don't take sannyas yet. Just give a few more days of Sankirtan. Because Makunda could understand if he's going to take sannyas, there'll be no more kirtan in the home of Srivas Pandit. Because without the Lord there, who will want kirtan? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has to be there for the kirtan. If he's going to take sannyas, he's going to go away. So there will be no more kirtan. It will be unbearable. So Makunda begged Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, kindly wait just a little longer. Please don't take sannyas yet. So anyway, when the time came for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take sannyas, Makunda also went. He was one of the four people, was it? Makunda, Gadarhar, uh, Chandrasekhar, and Nityananda, right, Nityananda, right, Nityananda, of course. So these four people, they all went to Katwa for Lord Chaitanya's sannyas ceremony, and Makunda is there to sing, to sing the songs for them. So, then, of course, they also went with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Puri. And they walked all the way with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. First they went to Shantipur to see Advaita Acharya and bring Mother Sachi so she could see Lord Chaitanya. And then from Shantipur, then they went to Jagannath Puri. And so Makunda went with them also. He traveled with them. And every year Makunda would go to Jagannath Puri to see the Lord and to take part in the Rathiyatra festival, to take the association of the devotee. So very, very, very important role in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Makunda. And of course his brother was also a very great devotee, Vasudev Datta. I don't know any pastimes about Sridhar Pandit. Can you offer something? Do you know any? Shri Today is the disappearance day of Sridhar Pandit. I, was, was that the place his, his place is not far away from here that we went there one time with Prabhupada. Was that the place in Prabhupada's time? We went there, in, I think it was 1977, and, the, and Prabhupada had Tamal Krishna Goswami speak and Jaipataka Swami speak. Huh? Okay, so uh, any can give like to input something on this? Jagannathra Yatra, Snanyatra. The, what is the, the significance of the Snanyatra? I said the birthday of Lord Jagannath. Huh? One of his birthdays. Janmashtami is also his birthday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? No?
Ah, in payment for who said this? Makunda called Gadarha. Uh huh. Makunda told Gadarhar, always consider me your servant. Okay. So nice loving dealings between the devotees. Always consider me. Gundarhar and Gopinath, yeah, is willing to leave Gopinath to go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no more questions. So we can finish. Mm. 
Mukunda. Mukunda Datta. We, we just, I read in Chaitanya Charitamrita said there were two singers in Braja, Madhu Kanta and Madhu Vrata. Vasudev Datta and Makunda Datta, Madhu Kanta and Madhu Vrata. That's what it says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila. Gauraguna Deshtapika says Makunda is Vrinda. Gora Leela becomes Makunda. Hmm. Gadarhar Pandit is, a, is, is Srimati Radharani, so why is it she's not able to recognize Pundarik Vijanidi? Why she can't recognize the identity of Pundarik Vijanidi? Well, we have to understand they were not revealing themselves initially. Pundarik Vijanidi was coming. He was not coming uh, in the mood of just to show himself as being some great powerful spiritual personality. He was just coming to visit Mayapur, he was coming to visit the devotees, you know, he's humble, so at the same time he's very wealthy. So Gadarhar just looked at the external. And he, he didn't think about it very, for very long. But it's an instructive pastime. You could say that the, it's an important uh, pastime to show us that when you look at somebody, don't try to judge their, their spiritual position just by their external features. So there's a lesson there for us in that pastime. Because people often do, they simply look at the external features and they don't, they don't understand the actual spiritual position of the person. They don't, they don't associate with them properly, they don't hear from them for a long time, they just simply look. And you look, oh he looks nice, oh this, this looks good, oh this doesn't look good, oh I don't like that. You, you, we're just uh, on the on the bodily platform, on the external platform. So Gadarhar is, of course, you, he's Srimati Radharani, he's the potency of the Lord, but at the same time he's playing the part of a devotee. So he's, he's you know, they're playing the role, playing the part. This is all Leela. And sometimes the pastimes are like that. Sometimes you can say by yoga maya. Yoga maya has two potencies. One is the covering and one is the revealing. So sometimes by Krishna's yoga maya, Krishna covers up one person's identity and the next minute Krishna will reveal through his yoga maya potency the, the position of that person. So it's all under Krishna's potency, Krishna's yoga maya. So Srimati Radharani, she's also affected like that, the gopis, they also 
associate with Krishna, sometimes, you know, that sometimes they they're bewildered by Krishna and other times they're remembering Krishna. Mother Yashoda looks in Krishna's mouth one minute and she can see the whole universe and she can see all the material manifestation and she can see herself and the next minute she can't see anything. She just sees her son. So when one minute Yoga Maya covers up, next minute Yoga Maya reveals and then covers up again. Just like we're reading about Lord Brahma and the Vimohan Leela. Lord Brahma, or oh, oh, Krishna, Lord Brahma, the, Lord Brahma had taken away the cows and then Krishna replaced them. And so the cows are all Krishna and the cowherd boys are all Krishna. But nobody knows. Everybody only sees cows and cowherd boys. They don't know it's Krishna, the Yoga Maya. It's yoga maya potency. So we have to understand the power of Krishna's yoga maya. So it's like that. Aho bhakti yam stana. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, with Makunda knew what to how to what what would be the right verse to awoke to awaken the proper mood in the hearts of Gadarhar or Pundarik Vijanidi. So he sang that verse about Krishna being so merciful and it awakened the loving ecstasy in Pundarik Vijanidi. 
and then Gadarhar can appreciate better his relationship with Pundari virginity. Oh, we could understand you, you, you didn't see somebody for a long time, you have difficulty to recognize them. So, although there's Srimati Radharani and uh, Maharaj Vrishabhanu <laughs> and they've come in Gora Lila, but they're very different from in Krishna Lila. It takes some time to get to know who's who. Just like you don't see devotees for a long time, you suddenly meet and you think, oh, oh, you're, oh, yeah, I remember you. And, <laughs> you know, you get people, you haven't seen them for a long time, the bodies change. And so similarly, Srimati Radharani, Maharaj Vrishabhanu, you know, they've got, com they've, they've come in Gora Lila, it's going to take a little while, you know, <laughs> before they recognize each person. So, it's not immediately obvious, but it didn't take very long. It just took that, that one stalka and everything fell into place. And he could understand, Gadarhar could understand, oh, this is, this is my spiritual teacher. It's my guru. Okay. Srimad Srila Prabhupada ki, Makunda Datta ki, Jagannath Nanyatra ki, Gaur Premanande Haribo.